and this I also find fascinating if you feel like here it's like you can see the, the entrance basically but it's amazing you could be practicing here and then you're like oh there's my dream to play the Roy Albert Hall Hello and welcome to a super special vlog because I'm at the Royal College of Music. This is the Amaryllis Fleming Concert Hall, one of their most versatile spaces. And I'm here meeting up with Adrian, the finger blazing rock modern loving pianist. And he was gracious enough to give me a tour of the RCM. There's a museum. Unfortunately, it wasn't open for us that day, but the Royal College of Music Museum does contain the earliest known guitar, the earliest string keyboard instrument, and the most recognized portraits of Joseph Haydn and Farinelli. This is the courtyard, Aww. which was apparently built only half a year ago before I came. The facilities at the RCM are absolutely amazing. Here's one of the performance studios, which allows for a very intimate venue for solo and chamber performances, and it seats about 40 people. As someone who was a performance major, one of the things that I am the most curious about at any music school I go to are the practice rooms. Oh, that feels like quiet, but definitely not as heavy as mine. But it's nice that you have a, a mirror here. Is very good for practice. Do you have your favorite practice room? I do. Yeah? I do, I do. Which one I, is I'll it? I'll show you later. Okay, okay, okay. But it's definitely not the upright piano. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Before we check out Adrian's favorite practice rooms, what I thought was really intriguing was their sign-up system. So do you scan your ID or do, is this paying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can do like this. Wow, and then you reserve your rooms? Yeah, if you do like this. No, I want to have a grand piano. <laughs> so you do like this, for example. As you can see, everything oh. is full. No, here you you could basically do like this. Yeah. You can do like save. Do you have a limit as to like how long you can take a room? Because I'm seeing some people like block. No, no, these are the professors, you know. I see. They can like do it as long as they want. They can come in whenever they want, basically. Okay. What about you guys? Mm, you can do like two hours. Only a day? Yeah, but then you can do short term reservation. It means if somebody cancels, we can just take their uh, room. Take this one. Yeah, so I see. Okay, so this is the piano faculty. All right, all right, let's go and check out Adrian's favorite practice rooms. This is the room where I mostly have to. Oh, you, you guys have two! But and a mirror. Two. Some of our rooms have two, but it's very rare. Hey, really? Yeah, and they're not that great. It's only in lessons rooms that we usually have two. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This wasn't the only practice room that Adrian showed me, but they were all as spacious and had two high quality pianos. They also had big windows to let in that sunlight because as a practice major and spending most of your time in a practice room, having some sunlight is really a blessing. Especially these ones with some great views. But it's amazing, you could be practicing here and then you're like, oh, there's my dream to play the Roy Albert Hall. Right on yeah. the other side. That's yeah. cute. Definitely. Do you have a preference between these two pianos? Um, well, the main thing is this one. Because always the teacher gets this one and you can't practice on the teacher's piano. Oh my gosh, you guys lock these. <laughs> Yo, my, my university seems a little more rogue compared to you guys. <laughs> you, you literally get kicked out at 10. Security will write your name down at my place like... I can practice at 2 in the morning, no one will care. And that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the three prairie rooms, which is a suite of three intimate spaces that are frequently used for chamber music, solo recitals, lectures, and master classes. As you can see, like, how you can record yourself, right? Mm -hmm. There's a camera and audio as well, so you enter your email, RCM email, and then you basically press recording and then when you press stop then it records it and automatically sends to your account that is amazing oh wow you can like literally see that we're on this is all live oh oops this is backwards You're like this is the zoom inversion it's not so i feel like the atmosphere is really so special because of the wood you know yes oh, oh. <laughs> all right 
as mentioned before, there are three peri rooms and they're all connected together with these double panes to help with the soundproofing. So, yes, yes, so yes. this semester I applied like for 10 courses in the book, except to one. Wow, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> When's that gonna be? Uh, 20th of May. Oh, coming up. Do you feel ready? Uh, <coughs> <laughs> I really started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Extensive stuff. I think, like, aside from a practice room and a concert hall, a music library is like my third home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <gasps> this piano stuff. Let's go here. Yeah. Oh. How do you guys bind them? Oh, you guys like bind these well. Then are you allowed to take these out? Yeah, sure. Do you or do you guys usually like photocopy them? No, 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 no. We just take them. and use. Do you get to write in them? Yes, you actually get to write in them. Really? Yeah. It's quite funny if you lend some and then you see the... The old markings? It, yeah, the, what they should do here. Like in writing, you say, ah, I see. <laughs> I know, sometimes I like to look at other people's fingerings yeah. and then secretly judge them. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what kind of hand size or shape they would have. Yes. Your hands are probably much larger, let's measure. Definitely. Because you're probably a foot tall. Oh my god. <laughs> you're like a foot taller than me if anyone wants to see differences. So I'm like 5'2. How tall are you? Guys? I'm 6'6. Six, six. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like 200 size. centimeters, basically. Yeah. Oh my god. So since our hand sizes are so different, yeah. I find it very easy to navigate the keys, like in Mozart. Do you have difficulty with that? Because your hands are much bigger. I actually have difficulty with like the, the runs, you know. The Mozart runs? Like the fiddly runs? Yeah, to... How to say... To make them crispy and to... You know when you, that when the finger has is done playing that it lifts itself up? Yes. But not... I mean, it's not like an active lift, obviously. It's yes. just relax. Yes. And like this control, because like... And I recently found out that I have to, which is obviously a known fact, but like I only discovered different, uh, recently that like I have to totally round my fingers that I don't waste energy because if I do it like this, then yes, it is not. Yeah. It's too slow if the fingers are too long. Yeah, and and then I don't, I only know the, the German word, but how do you know how do a thing here, right? And then you have like this this thing here, and then when you catapult it, the lever. Yeah, exactly. And so if I have that long fingers, yes. I, should, I shouldn't have them so long, but I should have to leave it shorter. So this is, this is easier yeah. than this, you know? Yes, there's less yeah, so. counterweight. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so I find it a bit difficult. But at the end of the day, everyone knows, like, no matter your hand size, you can be great pianists. And yes, of many course. Pianists, like, How you use it. For example, for example, Dimitri uh, Shishkin. Yes. I mean, he has super long fingers, and look how he plays the second Japan tooth. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I just lack strength, you know, that's always my, my issue, that like I haven't got enough explosive strength. Really? Do you think it's because your fingers are longer, so it's just a longer travel time? Yeah. And in general, I feel like I should... I, I lack kind of this, this muscle strength, you know. Oh, I've had a little. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's not all about working out, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I mean, I'm in general very fascinated in, in this Russian repertoire. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to study with Russian people. Yeah, what fascinates you about that? Or, the, or Russian repertoire? I feel like some things you can't describe, you know, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. words. Because mm -hmm. like, if you could like describe music in words, then... Then we don't need music. music. Yeah, so... <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know. Is there it music that... resonates with me, I don't know why. Right? Is there music that doesn't resonate with you? Like it just, you just feel like it doesn't fit you? Yeah. Because everyone's different. Mm -hmm. What's Brahms, yours? Actually. Really? It's like, I like to listen to him, but you, you know some music you just feel, I don't get it yet. I don't mm -hmm. get it yet. I love that you said, don't get it yet. Yeah, like, we could just go in for a second. Sure, 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 sure. sure. This is the Donaldson Room, which is part of their library, but it actually first housed the RCM's museum. I think just that it's, it's like the oldest thing, the first thing was built in the RCM, basically, in 
oh. 18 something. You know? Oh. Just like the disability is quite old. Yes, yes. And it basically, this bad thing wasn't changed since then. What a treat it was to be here, to be surrounded by all of this knowledge. You can't help but appreciate how quiet and humbling the presence in this room is. But I really like the atmosphere here. So if I want to do mental practice, I usually come here. Yes, this is you such have a great place. Yeah. Makes you productive. You... Okay, now back to Brahms. Yeah. Why do you and Brahms not get along? I just feel it hasn't clicked yet. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Like, for example, it was like this with Debussy when I was like 11. I, it's a nice music, but I, I, I just didn't, I couldn't connect. Yes. For some reason. Yes. And this is with Brahms, the case still. Mm. And actually, like in the beginning, funny enough, it was like Chopin was my like first love. Oh, yes. And then most composers like that were nice, but it didn't click. Uh -huh. Then I, I listened to them more and then, oh, this I like this one too. I like yes. this one too. And yes. it got more and more and more. And I feel like Brahms is one of the last ones that didn't click yet. You know oh. what I mean? Just got out of uh, the tour with Adrian. Thank you so much, Adrian. I'm so sorry. You had like two minutes before you had to rush to class. So I uh, couldn't say a proper goodbye. But if you're watching this, thank you for giving me your tour of the Royal College of Music. Uh, very amazing facility. Um, you guys like have everything. So if anybody's out there that wants to apply to the Royal College of Music. I'm not, they're, they're not sponsoring me to say any of this, but from what I can tell, great facilities. He really enjoys it here. He loves his teacher. He loves all the facilities. Again, thank you so much, Adrian, for taking time out of your schedule and giving me a lovely tour of the Royal College of Music. I hope you have a wonderful time at uh, your oral class. Good luck with that. Um, we're gonna continue on with today's journey doing, I have no idea. Uh, you'll see in the next clip for sure.